Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about uh, data scientists and um, uh, jobs that fall in that category. We're going to talk about how much money they make, what the barrier of entry is, how many jobs there are, and um, what the growth is for that category of job. Uh, we're going to be talking about a couple uh, blogs from Forbes and IBM, as well as the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and go over that, as well as my personal opinion about the matter. Before we get started, I want to just uh, throw out that the Humble Bundle, there will be a link in the description below, uh, has a data science book bundle um, by, presented by O'Reilly. So for a dollar, if you're if you're interested, you don't know where to get started, there's some great O'Reilly books here that go over R, Python, graphs, uh, data science in the command line, and at eight dollars you get you know six more books, and then fifteen dollars even more so. So for fifteen dollars you can get fifteen eBooks on uh, data science. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description and you can help me out by clicking on that. And if you want to, um, part of it will go to charity as well. And if you want to give it all to me or you want to give it all to the charity, you can do it uh, like so. Uh, so a little shout out to there. Now let's dive into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is my personal experience with data scientists. And um, I've worked with a few at uh, previous uh, software developer jobs. So what can you expect? Pre this is pretty accurate. Uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in my opinion, is very respectable. I don't think it gets more, much more respected than that as much as people like to say. So what can you expect for the average median pay or the middle point of a data science salary? So a hundred and basically $12,000 per year uh, for a data science in the, in, in the United States. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean entry level. If I had to guess, you're probably going to start somewhere around 70. Uh, entry level, and then you're going to jump every couple of years as you become a better and better individual. Now, what education-wise, I think this is pretty accurate. So unlike unlike full-stack development, web development, I feel like there's a larger barrier of entry with da data scientists. Not always, though. Not always. None of this is absolute, right, guys? We're just kind of talking uh, in generalities and my personal experience. But uh, based off of these, you kind of need a, a degree most of the time. Now, there are data science boot camps opening up. And doing very well as as uh, well. So in, in this degree, degrees that would go well with data scientists from people I've met, obviously math degrees, CS degrees, software degrees, uh, accounting degrees, um, uh, stats degrees, um, business degrees. Those are the types of degrees that I've met where people have been um, l working in data science and uh, doing very well as well and I know when I talk to a uh, individual he was telling me he gets three four calls a day uh, which is even more than I get on average uh, when he's not even looking for jobs so uh, from 2014 to to 2024 you can expect that there's gonna be 11 percent growth um, which I, I think is probably pretty reasonable it's faster than the average um, I think this is probably on the low end, to be honest. And I think data scientists is falling into a larger category. So perhaps computer information research scientists is a little bit uh, misleading, but I think data scientists is exactly what we're... It's the same category, but I think it actually opens up to more jobs than it's taking into consideration. Um, so, And by the way, this median pay is as of May 2016. It's pretty current. Now... Um, Let's talk a little bit about what type of languages you would work in as a data scientist before we go over what IBM, which I think is probably one of the more respectable sources that you can get into, because uh, these are the people who, who really track this stuff and work with data scientists. Um, they think that it's going to grow by 28% by 2020. So they think it's going the, the amount of jobs, uh, that was the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, they're estimating based off their stats 11% by 2024. IBM's thinking 28% in the next three years. This article is from May. Um, in terms of, of uh, stats, you know, pretty much the same 117,000 median pay. Um, where, where a lot of people work. So if you're interested in like, hey, what sort of job category are you going to work in? 59% are in uh, financial tech, IT, professional services. That'd be like law services, um, tech companies, stuff like that. Um, now, uh, 700,000 openings by 2020. That's a lot of jobs for a very high paying job. Now, um, and um, you got a couple of nice graphs here. I'm going to include all the links to this because we're going to kind of, kind of uh, blaze through it as we go on. 
So let's see here. So you can see here's some of the highest paying analytical jobs. Uh, machine learning, Apache Hive, big data. All that sort of falls into the data science degrees. Now, I this is a lot to, to take in, but I wanted to kind of talk about more so, and I'll, I encourage you guys to all, all check it out. Um, uh, but there's a whole article here by the same individual talking about why it's a great job to pursue, and it is right. We've we've done we've done things about about how uh, data scientists and uh, database technicians and managers they're all on the top jobs and in demand, and I and it, it just keeps on showing up, right? It's all in this software, it's all in this development world, and data scientists is a really big deal. And the reason they get paid so well is because it's very math oriented. Being a software developer, there is some math, but not like the math that there is a data scientist. Um, uh, I've talked about it once before. I went to a data science hackathon thinking I could hang up, hang out, like I'll pick up. I was the dumbest person in the room, and no one would even put me on a team because uh, they were all there with their coworkers, and it was clear that I basically had no idea how to get. I was like, "Oh, I can query a database and do the." Nope, you're talking about advanced algorithms that are going to do uh, predictive analysis based off multiple situations and languages I'm not familiar with, right? Like Python and R. It's very advanced, which makes the like, one of the things I've always said that makes the the money and the amount of the difficulty to get the harder and more technical a job is the higher the salary is as long as long as it's in demand right and as we've talked uh your labor list the bureau of labor statistics 11 percent ibm says 20 percent uh 28 percent by 2020 i i tend to agree because every when i look at the job market i see tons of things in demand and uh, I, I just wanted to kind of do a video to talk about it as an option. Now, it's not something that I'm completely familiar with, but it is something that that I think is pretty cool. Now, what, what types of things might you do as a data scientist? So, uh, not to go too much into detail, but at my previous job, uh, I used to get, I used to gather requirements for my 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 works other companies and one task that they asked was they wanted to and they were char a charter school system they wanted to be able to scan the hundreds of thousands of tests that they take online with their students and see if there's any anomalies in the test right these tests are created and they're edited but mistakes are made and so uh, one thing that he did was he used a, a tool called tableau which allows you to create uh, very dynamic charts uh, that will actually that actually scanned this hundreds of thousands of not only the the tests that uh, were in the system but every single test ever taken the question and the answered and then we're able to find outliers to show okay you know what this this per specific answer specific question we need to reevaluate this and go from there and see what tests people are on average are too hard too easy are just wrong. And so that's a that's kind of what you might be doing with data science. Now the reason that's important, why they also make so much money, is we just talked about 59% could be in the finance and insurance industry, and that's that's one of those things where you make them money by finding those stats and those analysis. I know I know some of the data scientists at my old work saved the companies hundreds of thousands of dollars by doing some very good analysis of. Uh, a financial aspect of the company that I'm not going to go into detail about, but literally, no joke, upwards of a million dollars, uh, specifically due to statistical analysis. And this is the reason you can make a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in the if you're just the average, right? If you're doing better than the average, you can you can do well. At, you can make a lot of money as well. Now, uh, if you if you like math and you like sort of stats, and I tend to like that, I, I kind of drop off once we get to uh, uh, advanced calculus, and I'd have to study up a little bit. But I like it very much so. Uh, but in terms of data scientists, data engineers, data developers, there's a lot of growth. Really, there's three things you should be looking for for a role. Uh, when you're trying to break into an industry, you're deciding what you want to go to college for. You're deciding what you want to go, what you want to become, and maybe not even go to college, right? Granted, in this specific instance, it kind of, the average employee has a degree in this, a degree that relates to this. But take myself for instance, 
we all can work our own own path. So what are the three things that this kind of checks off for me when I'm looking at the job market? If I was going to be, you know, 18 or so or 25 or even older than I am, right? One, what is the growth of the job? We've already discussed that on the low end, 11%, on the high end, 28% in much quicker fashion. What is the salary of that job? That's two. And and how many, uh, so what is salary? <laughs> I'm going to all choked up here. Salary, growth, and the amount of jobs. And there are quite, amount of, quite a bit of jobs here. And I encourage you to do your own research, but I think I think you're going to be very happy if you go in the data science realm, especially because of that barrier of entry, right? Because of the fact that that it is hard to hire competent people. A lot of people think, oh, well, there's tons of people going. There's a tons of tons of people who. There's a lot of people who you could tell. I am a very technical individual. I am so unqualified to be a data scientist. Okay, so uh, there is a large barrier of entry to to jump into this, but if you are if you're an intelligent person you can build a you can build a portfolio in this just as much you can go and get your degree and you can pursue a, a internship and entry level this is a great field to go to and i highly encourage you guys to check that out and uh, again if you're interested in picking up some books while you're on your journey you can use my link down below to get those books in r python and a bunch of other stuff as always guys i appreciate you uh checking out this video and watching it and supporting me uh, through stuff like this. Uh, join the Facebook group where I'm going to be giving away a entire uh, one or two of these. Uh, the nice people at Humble Bundle sent me this. And go ahead and uh, join the Discord channel as well. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you happen to be looking for a boot camp, I couldn't recommend Dev Mountain any higher. They also include housing with their tuition so you can get up and go and get started right away. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.